Hello and welcome to the Post Cafe. My name is Corey Tedrow. Today's episode is entitled Adapting to Change, and we are joined by Dory Bashan. He is the VP of Technical Development at Opus Post Production in Tel Aviv, Israel. Welcome, Dory. Thank you for having me. So, Dory, can you tell us about uh, Opus and your role there, what it is that you do? Opus was uh, founded in 1993 and have grown steadily since. I'm in charge of the, all the technical side, uh, from workflow design to server management to IT management, all that come with it. Opus got two sites, uh, both in Tel Aviv, 10 minutes drive from our one another. Uh, one is a large site with just a bit over 100 Evids. The second site is smaller with almost 20 Evid system. Uh, the, the large site is mostly doing reality TV, and the small site is doing uh, dramas and feature films. We're doing color grading on both sides, um, mostly on Resolve and, and on Symfony. And so back when the pandemic hit, what happened? How did, you, how did you and your team respond to that? Well, actually, we were testing Terra Dici and remote editing for two years before the pandemic hits. So we were quite ready. Wow. So you were ahead of the curve there. You'd already been testing remote workflows. That definitely has not been the norm for most of the other folks I've talked to. Started to hear about Israel going to a lockdown on Thursday in March. And by Monday morning, we had 25 editors working remotely. So have you changed anything about uh, how you're working since the pandemic initially hit? We basically, when the pandemic hits, we took the offline edit suites in the facility and just convert them into remote rotations. A bit later, we started to we we started a new data center locally here, a new private data center inside Opus that serves a data center dedicated to remote work. Prior to the pandemic, did everyone always come into the office? No one really worked remotely. Yeah, we had a few editors talking about remote editing. It was always something in the future. And what was the biggest challenge for you and and your clients adapting to the new workflow? The pandemic had had some difficulties, not not the pandemic, but the situation, the difficulty of communicating between uh, team members. And there was a lot of solution out there for it. We found that the, uh, actually the free tools are doing most of the, most of the, most of the work for us. We're using uh, uh, screen sharing via OBS or via Zoom, um, communication between team members via, with uh, WhatsApp, SMS. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, it takes so much hardware and technology to enable remote editing and remote workflows, yet so many of the companion apps that and tools that folks use to sort of fill in the workflow, as you've mentioned, are the free ones. It's just, it's funny. What was the feedback you got from your clients when they initially started working remotely? I was afraid of it, to be honest. Uh, but the feedback was amazing. It was amazing. We had people coming back to the office like a month later saying, I don't want to go to the office anymore. That's great that everyone was so happy. But why, why were you afraid? I was afraid of blocked frames, of audio lags, uh, all, the, all those technical issues. But I must say that Teradici proved itself amazingly. People started to talk with me about doing uh, half time, half at work, half at the office, half at home. And this is something that we're doing now. We're offering productions to do a hybrid workflow coming into the office, into the edit room with the producer two times a week, three times a week. The rest of the time, be at home, edit remotely. We have a few editors working 100% of the time at home. We have a few editors having one out, working 100% at the facility. And there is a, the in-between, the, not the major editors or not the what we call a episode finisher, finishers, but the editors are working two days here, two days there. One day they're deciding in the morning they want to do work remotely. They can. 
This is how we manage it now. But the feedback at the beginning was, I was afraid of it, but it was amazing. People were amazed of the performance. Did your clients miss being able to work together, being able to be in the same room together? Sure. When people got back into the office about a month or a month and a half after the pandemic hits, people missed each other. They missed the lunch together. They missed their reviewing cuts together. Yeah. But on the, on the other side, the, the people told me, I got, I got to spend a lot of more time with the kids. I can start edit at 6 a.m. and at 12 a.m. do a long lunch break uh, with my kid. As the pandemic, pandemic hits, school was closed as well. I, I was amazed by the performance, but as for the client's point of view, it really, they were amazed by the performance by themselves, but yeah, they do miss being at the same place. So I think this is what led to the hybrid that we're engaging now. So how's the remote um, review and approval process going? Are your clients happy with it? Or do they want, do they want something that's more integrated, you know, that enables you to add notes directly to a timeline? Actually, I talk to my clients a lot about it. I, I uh, demo them uh, editorial management. I demo them uh, for MIO. Evercast, all, I think all the solution out there. And the 90% of them told me all we need is Avid to implement a chat inside Media Composer. This is all we need. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm writing that down right now. Uh, and I think that not only a chat, but any uh, development that Avid can do on the uh, integration of uh, social media and so on the mobile application inside MediComposer for collaboration can do a lot to help this. Uh, integrate WhatsApp web inside MediComposer, inside, integrate Zoom into MediComposer, inter, in, integrate chat window on team members on the same project on the Nexus. Once one of those was, will, will be implemented, implemented I, I from my point of view, my client's point of view, we don't see a need in any of the um, complicated solution out there. I think this is mostly because we not, we're not doing uh, color grading remotely. Uh, a lot of uh, the solution out there uh, offering uh, color, uh, color calibrated uh, review and approval and uh, frame accurate for review and approval and offline and in reality shows, even in drama, we don't need those. Color grading all, even during the pandemic, we, we continue doing color grading on site. This is actually the missing piece in the remote work for now for us. Uh, the ability not just to review an approval, but to actually grade from remote. To have an, a, color, a colorist working from home on a media and, and a resolve system or avid system sitting on site getting SDI monitoring and uh, color calibrated and color and firm accuracy playback. That's what I've heard from other folks I've talked to is, or that seems to be the consensus is that that finishing, you know, full blown editing suite feel is just not there yet when it comes to remote workflows. There is a, a penalty when, you, uh, when you're working remotely. So the client monitor demands a lot of bandwidth from the end user. Not everyone got such a high-speed internet at home. So re for most remote editors, client monitor is not an option. I thought this penalty was, will be something that editors will not be able to live with. And I was surprised to, to discover that they can live without it without any problem. Sure. I mean, when you don't have a choice. Yeah, okay. This yeah. is fine. Exactly. So what was the biggest change you'd say you had to make in adapting to the new normal? When, when editors started to come back to the office, the demand for a hybrid workflow came up and we thought it will be, it will not be smart to let them connect remotely to the same edit system that they are working on inside the facility. This led us to, to build a new data center inside the facility dedicated for remote work. So they have their own edit suite when they come to the office, they have a dedicated re a remote workstation in the server room when they are do working from home. 
keep those separated when everything is connected to the nexus, of course. This is a major change. So we had to build a new server room, a large server room. We have 25 workstations in this server room for now. And yeah, with all the infrastructure needed, air conditioning, uh, whatever. Yeah, that's definitely the downside. I mean, you basically have to build your own private cloud and then, you know, support it. Yeah. Dedicated private cloud. Yeah. Has the hybrid way of working, has this model changed how you manage things? Again, it's not just the hybrid workflow from the management point of view, it's the hybrid workflow from the production point of view, because we are not investing in real estate anymore. When we are fully booked, we just add remote machines. We're not seeking for empty uh, areas in the building to build uh, a few more habits. We're just offering clients. We're fully booked. You can, do, you can work remote. That's it. This is a major change, and this is actually has become an advantage because if I have a demand for a, a, a few more suites and I'm building them remotely, I'm going to full power in, in a day. If I need to build a few edit suites inside the facility, it can take weeks. This is the most important part because productions, we're charging less for remote work. So production now can uh, calculate the budget based on on on-site or remote and get to a cost-effective solution for the production. Dory, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat. It's been fun. Thank you. And that is it for this episode of The Post Cafe. Thanks so much for joining us. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.